Behind the cheery facade of Mary Poppins, there lurked discontent and discord. Julie Andrews faced a rivalry with a co-star, Dick Van Dyke lagged in dancing rehearsals, and the Sherman brothers quarreled with author P.L. Travers. Furthermore, the production struggled with technical malfunctions, like failing wires during flying scenes. These scandals unveil an unseen side to the beloved film, exposing the imperfections that plague the making of this cinematic gem. Julie Andrews' performance as the magical nanny in the film captivated audiences and propelled her to iconic status. Her portrayal was dazzling, bringing to life a character that was both enchanting and authoritative. Yet, this career-defining role came with its own set of challenges. The overwhelming success of this classic typecast her as the quintessential prim and proper Mary Poppins. While she enjoyed the fame and recognition, Andrews also grappled with mixed feelings about being confined to one image. Her tongue-in-cheek bumper sticker declaring Mary Poppins is a junkie cleverly highlighted her frustration with how the world perceived her after the movie's release. Despite her talent and versatility, subsequent projects struggled to find an audience. Viewers often sought the same indomitable nanny they had grown to love, leaving Andrews yearning for opportunities to showcase her range beyond this wholesome role. The tension between her desire for artistic growth and the public's expectations created a unique dichotomy in her career, influencing the paths she chose in the years following her celebrated performance. Despite Burt's charismatic dancing and flawless Cockney accent in Mary Poppins, Dick Van Dyke privately battled intense alcoholism and depression. Behind the scenes, he struggled with splitting hangovers, suicidal thoughts, and self-loathing while portraying his career-defining role. For decades, the contrast between his on-screen joy and off-screen darkness went unnoticed by even his closest colleagues, highlighting how easily an actor's struggles can be hidden by Hollywood's glamorous facade. Only recently has Van Dyke opened up about his experiences, shedding light on the silent battles he fought during the making of this classic film. In 1964, the classic film Mary Poppins brought the magical nanny to life on the big screen. Behind the scenes, a different kind of magic was at work. A clash of wills between British author P.L. Travers and Disney. Travers detested the movie adaptation, criticizing everything from the music to the casting. The contentious relationship between Travers and Disney played out over years, with Travers rejecting many of Disney's ideas. This struggle highlighted the tension between authors who want to protect their work and filmmakers who interpret it differently. Even after the film's release, Travers remained unhappy going so far as to forbid any Americans from working on future Poppins projects, a move that revealed her lasting disdain. Mary Poppins may be a beloved classic, but the battle between P.L. Travers and Disney added a layer of drama behind the scenes, shaping the movie's history in a unique way. Securing the film rights for this classic was a long and arduous journey for Walt Disney. Obtaining P.L. Travers' blessing was just one battle in a much larger war that spanned nearly two decades. An ardent promise made to his daughter fueled his determination, pushing him through countless unanswered letters and repeated denied requests. With each rejection, Disney's resolve only grew stronger. The casting choices also faced intense scrutiny. Travers was notably dismissive of suggestions like Cary Grant for the role of Bert, illustrating her unwillingness to compromise on her vision. Despite these challenges, Walt persisted, adapting his plans and evolving his scripts to meet Travers' expectations even when she deemed them unworthy. After years of persistent courting, he finally triumphed in the grueling rights battle. However, creative differences continued to clash throughout the filming process, showcasing the ongoing struggle to balance the original vision with Disney's adaptations. Karen Dotrice's singing challenges in the 1964 movie Mary Poppins presented unforeseen obstacles for the young actress. Initially, her operatic style singing drew amusement from the experienced crew during rehearsals. Julie Andrews stepped in to help refine Dotrice's technique, sparking a transformation in the budding starlet. With Andrews' guidance, Dotrice evolved into the endearing on-screen sister beloved by fans. This collaborative effort behind the scenes showcased the dedication of the cast and crew, who tirelessly worked through rehearsal after rehearsal to elevate Dotrice's role from ridicule to enchanting. In 1964, the film Mary Poppins held more than just box office promise. It symbolized a 20-year commitment fulfilled by Walt Disney. His love for his daughters and Travers books inspired an intense mission to create a suitable adaptation. Disney's affection for subtle details, such as the poignant Feed the Bird song linking Mary Poppins and the Bird Woman, showcased his emotional dedication. 
This classic exuded sentimentality, a personal endeavor that honored the imaginations of both young and old from its very first enchanting note. In 1964 movie, Mary Poppins and Bert sported soot-covered faces. Nowadays, viewers see these as potentially racially insensitive. Back then, people viewed the faces simply as those of chimney sweeps. This contrast highlights how society has evolved in scrutinizing past works with a more critical lens, even cherished ones. This classic reflects changing societal norms over time. Even the whimsical term supercalifragilisticexpialidocious did not escape the clutches of legal scrutiny. The songwriters behind this catchy phrase, the Sherman Brothers, found themselves embroiled in a lawsuit when another duo claimed they had plagiarized the tongue-twisting term from a similar song written in the 1950s. This allegation brought considerable attention to the film and shaded it with controversy. However, as the case unfolded, it crumbled under the weight of historical evidence. Investigators discovered the first recorded use of the whimsical word appeared in a newspaper article dating back to 1931. This revelation proved crucial in absolving the Sherman brothers of any wrongdoing in the eyes of the law. For weeks, the spotlight shone on the composers, tagging them as copyright infringers, yet the antiquated evidence not only vindicated them, but also demonstrated the richness of language and creativity inherent in the film. The incident showcased how the charm of the movie could become overshadowed by legal battles, but in the end, it only highlighted the enduring magic of cinematic artistry. Casting horror icon Elsa Lanchester as the eccentric nanny seemed an odd choice for a family-friendly musical. Fresh off her career-defining role as the Bride of Frankenstein, Lanchester's intimidating persona hardly evoked warm and nurturing vibes. However, Walt Disney saw beyond her macabre credentials. He recognized that her unique blend of eccentricity and unpredictability matched the unconventional character in the film perfectly. This choice brought a layer of complexity to the role that could have easily been overlooked in a more traditional casting decision. Despite her ability to embody whimsy, her chilling presence continued to unnerve young Karen Dotrice during filming. The tension between Lanchester's fearsome reputation and the light-hearted nature of the movie created an interesting dynamic on set. Audiences would come to appreciate this distinctive interpretation, which contributed to the show's enduring charm. Lanchester's unexpected casting added depth to the narrative, making it all the more memorable. Disney employed cutting-edge technology to merge animation with live action in the 1964 film. The intricate techniques developed specifically for this classic set remarkable new standards and special effects, earning the studio an Academy Award for its revolutionary technical accomplishments. Audiences in 1966 were captivated by scenes featuring animated penguin waders and horse head handles coming to life, creating a thrillingly surreal experience. Unbeknownst to viewers, meticulous green screen methods and frame-by-frame -frame synchronizations were pioneered behind the scenes to bring about the enchanting movie magic. Behind the charming facade of the film, the lives of the Banks children reveal a stark contrast to their on-screen joy. Matthew Garber, who played one of the young siblings, was just beginning to shine when tragedy struck. His promising life was cut short by pancreatitis at the tender age of 21, leaving fans and loved ones heartbroken. In contrast, Karen Dutrice chose a different path. After experiencing the spotlight, she decided to step back from acting in her teens, yearning for a more conventional life. This choice stemmed from a feeling of having lost her childhood to the demands of fame. Their stories highlight the unpredictable nature of child stardom, where success can be fleeting and happiness elusive. While their performances brought joy to audiences worldwide, the pressures of early fame led to outcomes that starkly differed. The bittersweet journeys of these young actors serve as a poignant reminder that talent alone does not guarantee a fulfilling or secure future in the entertainment industry. In 1964, the film Mary Poppins dominated the Academy Awards despite being snubbed as Best Picture. Julie Andrews claimed the Best Actress Award for her luminous debut, adding to the film's accolades. With 13 nominations and 5 wins, including Disney's first competitive Oscar, the movie validated the magic audiences adored. Today, nearly 60 years later, songs like A Spoonful of Sugar and the Chimney Sweep dance scene remain captivating cultural landmarks etched into public nostalgia. Versatile casting was a hallmark of the 1964 classic Mary Poppins, David Tomlinson's ability to seamlessly transition between voicing Mr. Banks and various animated animal characters demonstrated the cast's cross-functional contributions. Similarly, Dick Van Dyke portrayed both the wisecracking Bert and the doddering senior Mr. Dawes, 
reinforcing the all-hands-on-deck spirit behind the scenes. Whether singing, dancing, voicing animated figures, or portraying multiple roles, the versatile cast and crew played integral parts in actualizing Walt Disney's whimsical vision for this timeless film. From the lead actors to the supporting players, the cast versatility was a key factor in bringing the enchanting world of Mary Poppins to life on the silver screen. The legendary Sherman Brothers shaped the iconic soundscape with an astounding 34 original compositions for the film. Their unmatched creative output produced enough signature songs for several Disney films. Yet iconic toe tappers like A Spoonful of Sugar and heartwarming ballads like Let's Go Fly a Kite only scratched the surface of their prolific creative output during an intense multi-year writing spree that left indelible marks on musical history. In Mary Poppins, their music truly elevated the movie to a timeless classic, capturing hearts with melodies that continue to enchant audiences of all ages. The Sherman Brothers' lasting impact on the musical landscape is undeniable, forever woven into the fabric of this beloved film. In 1964, Dick Van Dyke's famously terrible Cockney accent in Mary Poppins sparked intense backlash from British critics. His over-exaggerated delivery baffled English viewers who found the misguided dialect distractingly inaccurate. Van Dyke later charmingly owned this notorious linguistic blunder. Yet, outraged British journalists vilified Disney's ignorance for failing to hire a single English cast member for this culturally British tale. Unfortunately, the creative team lacked the cultural fluency to recognize or coach Van Dyke's awful speech patterns early enough to remedy before opening night. In 1964, during the filming of Mary Poppins, Julie Andrews experienced a near-death incident that brought into focus the dangers of attempting to create cinematic magic. While gracefully descending with her umbrella from a fly rig, the wires supporting Andrews unexpectedly snapped, leading to a perilous fall. Fortunately, a lighting rig swiftly intervened, preventing a fatal outcome. The shaken actress understandably hesitated to resume aerial stunts following this traumatic mishap. Her accident shed light on the risky uncertainty of technical elements, despite the elaborate safeguards and intense preparations in place to strive for perfection. This incident served as a poignant reminder of the real risks involved in bringing fantasy to life on the big screen. Walt Disney's perfectionism generated enough deleted scenes and songs to assemble an alternate version of Mary Poppins. Early techniques failed splicing animated penguins beside live performers. The legendary tea party on the ceiling proved too technically intimidating even for Disney's innovative team. An entire musical number, the beautiful Briny got chopped due to runtime despite gorgeous visuals. Somewhere hidden in the mysterious Disney vault, these cutting room outtakes languish unseen together with dismissed Burt dance numbers and a ghastly scene killing off the innocent Banks children. In 1964, the movie Mary Poppins sparked bitter tension between P.L. Travers and Disney that still lingers today. Pamela's will adamantly ban Americans from involvement, leading to conflict. Even in 2018, when Emily Blunt assumed the iconic role, Travers' post-mortem grudge forced executives to consult British lawyers to ensure compliance with her strict decree. This lifelong feud unveils significant creative disparities, overshadowing modern adaptations of this classic. Travers' reluctance to cede control to Disney continues to haunt the legacy of Mary Poppins. During the filming of Mary Poppins in 1964, the on-set team showed remarkable compassion for Dick Van Dyke, Recognizing his struggles with alcoholism, they went to great lengths to support him. To help ease his withdrawal tremors, they discreetly provided him with whiskey. They skillfully disguised any minor mishaps that might have occurred due to his inebriation. However, it was Julie Andrews who eventually intervened, convincing Van Dyke to seek rehabilitation. Walt Disney himself stepped in, offering to cover the costs of relocating Van Dyke's family near the studio. This move was meant to provide him with the necessary support and accountability. This behind-the-scenes revelation sheds light on the incredible compassion displayed in the high-pressure environment of Hollywood filmmaking. Mary Poppins is a classic film that premiered in 1964. The story is set in early 20th century London and follows a magical nanny, Mary Poppins, who is hired to take care of the bank's children. She introduces the children to a world of whimsy and wonder through her magical abilities. The show's main characters include Mary Poppins, the Banks children, and Bert, a charming chimney sweep. Throughout the movie, Mary Poppins teaches the children important life lessons while embarking on fantastical adventures with them. This beloved film has received numerous awards and accolades for its charming story, 
memorable music, and captivating performances. The casting process for the 1964 film Mary Poppins was a meticulous endeavor that brought together a talented ensemble. For the titular role, Walt Disney personally handpicked Julie Andrews, who had just made her Broadway debut in My Fair Lady. Andrews' charming and poised demeanor perfectly embodied the magical nanny. To find the right actor for the role of Bert the Chimney Sweep, the producers conducted extensive chemistry tests, ultimately selecting Dick Van Dyke. Van Dyke's infectious energy and comedic timing complemented Andrews' performance, creating an unforgettable on-screen duo. The casting of the Banks family was equally crucial. For the patriarch, George, the producers chose David Tomlinson, whose stern yet affable presence balanced the household. Glennis Johns was cast as the free-spirited Mistress Banks, her spirited portrayal adding depth to the family dynamic. The young actors who played the Banks' children, Karen Dutras and Matthew Garber, were discovered through a nationwide search. Their natural chemistry and charm brought the story's central relationship to life, captivating audiences of all ages. The meticulous casting process for Mary Poppins resulted in a timeless classic, with each performer seamlessly inhabiting their role and contributing to the film's enduring legacy. The directorial vision behind the 1964 movie Mary Poppins was focused on creating a magical and whimsical world filled with fantasy and heartwarming moments. The director approached the story with a blend of creativity and imagination, drawing inspiration from the original book by P.L. Travers and infusing it with his own style. His vision was to transport audiences into a fantastical realm where anything was possible, combining live action with animation in innovative ways. Creative influences for the director included classic Hollywood musicals, as well as the charming British sensibility of the source material. His style involved a meticulous attention to detail, from the colorful costumes to the elaborate set designs, creating a visually stunning backdrop for the characters to come alive. He collaborated closely with the cast and crew encouraging them to fully embody their roles and bring authenticity to their performances. Together, they worked to capture the spirit of magic and joy that permeated the story of Mary Poppins, resulting in a timeless classic that continues to enchant audiences to this day. During the production of the 1964 movie Mary Poppins, the set design was elaborate, creating a magical and whimsical atmosphere. The locations chosen, such as London streets and rooftops, added authenticity to the film. Logistical challenges arose from coordinating intricate dance sequences and special effects. Innovative techniques included the use of matte paintings to enhance backgrounds and combining live action with animation seamlessly. The film pushed boundaries in blending live action and animation, creating a visually stunning experience for viewers. The musical score and soundtrack of Mary Poppins were masterfully crafted by the Sherman brothers, Richard M. Sherman and Robert B. Sherman. Their approach combined whimsical melodies with clever lyrics, enhancing the film's narrative and emotional tones. Songs like A Spoonful of Sugar and Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious are not only catchy, but also serve to deepen the character's experiences and the story's charm. The lively orchestration supports the magical aspects of Mary Poppins, while the poignant moments are underscored by softer, more reflective melodies, ensuring an emotional connection with the audience. In interviews, the Shermans expressed their desire to create music that felt timeless, appealing to both children and adults. They worked closely with director Robert Stevenson to ensure the songs integrated seamlessly into the film. The arrangement by conductor Erwin Kostel added layers of texture, bridging transitions between character development and plot advancement. Musicians brought this vision to life, using a rich palette of instruments that aligned with the film's vibrant aesthetic. Vocal performances, especially by Julie Andrews and Dick Van Dyke, brought charisma and energy, making the songs memorable parts of cinematic history. The combination of uplifting tunes and meaningful lyrics shaped the film into a lasting favorite, capturing the essence of hope and imagination. In the 1964 movie Mary Poppins, one iconic scene is the animated sequence where Mary Poppins and the children jump into a sidewalk chalk drawing. The direction in this scene is whimsical, with vibrant colors and imaginative imagery that captivate the audience. The performance of the actors blends seamlessly with the animation, creating a magical and believable world. Cinematography enhances the enchanting atmosphere, using innovative techniques to merge live action and animation flawlessly. This moment has a lasting impact on viewers, transporting them into a fantastical realm of creativity and wonder. 
The filmmakers and actors involved in this scene praise the collaborative effort required to bring this sequence to life. Julie Andrews, who played Mary Poppins, commended the creativity and technical skill of the animators, while director Robert Stevenson highlighted the importance of balancing live action and animation seamlessly. The impact of this scene on audiences is profound, evoking a sense of nostalgia and sparking the imagination of viewers of all ages, making it a timeless and cherished moment in cinematic history. Mary Poppins made a significant cultural and social impact in 1964. The film resonated with audiences by blending fantasy with reality, presenting themes of family and responsibility. Mary Poppins herself became an iconic figure, symbolizing the magic of childhood and the importance of imagination. The catchy songs and memorable characters contributed to its popularity, allowing it to become a beloved classic that appealed to both children and adults. As it influenced pop culture, the film introduced phrases and songs that have remained in the public consciousness. The character's whimsical approach to life encouraged viewers to explore joy and creativity, which contrasted sharply with the more serious issues of the time, such as societal expectations and family dynamics. Discussions about gender roles emerged, as Mary Poppins challenged traditional views of women. Her independence and authority in the household provided a fresh perspective on women's capabilities. The film's innovative combination of live action and animation inspired future filmmakers, setting a standard for creativity in cinema. Its legacy continues to influence various forms of entertainment, including stage adaptations and merchandise. Overall, Mary Poppins remains a poignant reminder of the power of storytelling to uplift spirits and challenge norms. Mary Poppins, released in 1964, garnered widespread critical acclaim. Critics praised Julie Andrews's performance as the titular character and the film's magical storytelling. Audiences were equally enamored, with many hailing it as a family classic. The movie received 13 Academy Award nominations, including Best Picture, and won five Oscars, highlighting its impact and quality. These accolades signify recognition and respect for the cast and crew's hard work, talent, and dedication. Awards like these solidify the film's place in cinematic history and mark it as a beloved piece of entertainment that has stood the test of time. During the making of Mary Poppins, the cast and crew experienced many memorable moments. For instance, Julie Andrews, who played Mary Poppins, shared a heartwarming story about her first day on set. She was nervous but excited, and after she stepped into her iconic costume, she felt an immediate connection to the character. The magic truly began when she met the children, especially the young actors who were captivated by her presence. Additionally, the production faced challenges with special effects. The scene where Mary and Bert dance with cartoon characters required meticulous planning. The animators and live action crew had to work closely to ensure everything flowed seamlessly. Dick Van Dyke, who played Bert, often joked about how he had to stay in sync with imaginary characters, leading to some amusing moments on set as he improvised to keep the spirit light. The famous rooftop scene showcased the crew's dedication. The filmmakers used a combination of practical effects and innovative camera techniques that amaze everyone. Behind the scenes, the cast would share laughs and stories, creating a family atmosphere. Even the legendary song Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious was born from playful improvisation. The actors would spontaneously break into song, making the filming feel like a joyful experience rather than just work. The blending of live action and animation was groundbreaking, and the crew often marveled at the possibilities, excited to push boundaries. Many of the crew members formed lifelong friendships during this production, bonding over the shared experiences and challenges. The entire process became a cherished memory, filled with laughter, creativity, and a sense of wonder. Mary Poppins, the 1964 movie, holds a significant place in film history due to its innovative blend of live action and animation. Its impact on future filmmaking can be seen in the advancement of special effects and the use of music and storytelling. The film inspired a new wave of family-friendly movies that combined fantasy elements with real-world settings, influencing generations of filmmakers to create magical and heartwarming stories. Mary Poppins' legacy lives on through its timeless characters, memorable songs, and enduring themes of love, family, and imagination. When reflecting on the 1964 movie Mary Poppins, many individuals find themselves transported to a world filled with magic and wonder. This timeless classic has touched the hearts of audiences across generations, inspiring a love for cinema and storytelling.
Viewers have shared how Mary Poppins, with her enchanting songs and playful adventures, has left a lasting impact on their lives. Some recall fond memories of watching the film with family, while others credit it for sparking a lifelong interest in movies. By sharing your own experiences and memories related to Mary Poppins, you contribute to a community of cinema enthusiasts who celebrate the power of film to connect, inspire, and entertain. Your voice adds depth and richness to the collective tapestry of shared stories, enriching the cinematic journey for all. So, join in the conversation, share your thoughts, and invite others to do the same. Together, let's continue to explore the magic of Mary Poppins and the world of